thank you for the introduction. Thank you for the applause. I haven't said anything yet. Just okay. Let's uh, let's go. Okay. Um, fantastic to be back. Uh, actually, fantastic to be be back in this room. I think this is a wonderful venue. Um, before before we get going, I'd like a, to offer a small word from um, my sponsor. <laughs> you ready? There we go. So that's John Nelson, for those of you that don't know, my, my friend and colleague who is still stuck in his woodshed in Michigan. Uh, he's not been out for three whole years. He's lost the key, I believe. <laughs> okay, so... There's a large underground group of people uh, who assert that the uh, London tube map is no longer fit for purpose and uh, simply relies on its lauded sort of history uh, as a descendant of Harry Beck's wonderful 1933 map. And I'm one of those people who thinks the map is no longer fit for purpose. And in 2019, this was the original slide that I used to present at NASIS in Tacoma, where I presented on a totally new design uh, that I'd made. And the map received quite a few comments, uh, some of them very pleasant and one or two very unpleasant, which I'll share with you a bit later. And so bringing it up to date a little bit, in 2022, actually, you know, this year in June, um, Transport for London, who operate uh, the network and who make the map, um, opened a new line, the Elizabeth Line. Uh, the Queen managed to stay alive long enough to open the line that was named after her, so go Queen. Um, and of course the official map received a large new update. And of course the voices that are decrying its design or lack of design grew louder and louder. Uh, so I reinvented my map uh, to have another go. So. This year's talk is basically an update of the talk I gave three, three years ago. I'm going to show you the new map. I'm going to show you how I've designed it, accommodating the results of um, uh, some sort of semi-analytical uh, editorial process I did on the, the new map in June, plus the comments I received based on the, the old map. And along that kind of journey, I'm going to consider, or maybe will all consider, that sort of crucial question as to whether holding on to an original map no matter how good it might be, is preferable to taking stock and drawing a line and saying, let's do something different, because different might be better. Um, I also couldn't resist the temptation to come back and talk about a railway map in a railroad ticketing hall. It seemed, seemed to, to work. So there'll be some old gags for those that saw the talk in 2019, and here's the first one. Before we can talk about, um, you know, the new stuff, I want to go back to the future a little bit, um, and I want to show you how I got to the point of making a new map in the first place and review why, why I did that. So for those that, that know me, um, many will know that I've got a fascination with the London Underground map. Some will call it a fetish. And to the extent that I've got the map inked on my left arm, um, it's my favorite map. Ever. It's iconic, um, you know, of, of course it's, it's from home, so maps of home are always something that you gravitate to anyway. And I think it's a, a beautiful piece of um, map design and design work in, in general. And so that's a little bit about my, my fetish. Here's the map itself. So the 1933 map design by Harry Beck, it's, it's, it's this cartographic icon. It's, it's undeniable, undeniably useful for, for transport, for way, way, wayfinding, and for allowing people to go from one place to another. It's topological, it's reductive, it's, it eschews above ground detail apart from the, the River Thames to sign it, could have kind of give it grounding in London. Um, and it uses a minimalist symbol vocabulary in order to be able to represent the stations and the interlinks and the interchanges. So there's so much missing from the map in terms of showing what London is about, but it works for the purpose for which it's, it's designed. Um, there's lots of things about it that Beck put into the map. It's schematicized, it's color coded to fit a, a design theme of the time, straight lines, horizontal, 45 degrees, and so on. 
Diamonds for Interchange stations. It's, it's a practical outcome um, and a brilliant design. But there are only seven lines and 212 stations. And in 2019, this is the map, showing a massively increased network uh, of interlinked services. So there's now 11 tube lines, a light railway, five overground services, a tram network, and several uh, rail services with 487 stations. But the map still uses the same sort of Beck philosophy for design. Um, it retains. And, and so it's my view, and, and many others, that it's kind of lost its way. It's gone down the wrong track. Uh, it's full of clutter. I'm sorry. I, t I told you. I warned you. Um, so in summary, I think it's about time that we, we sort of uh, broke with a little bit of this tradition, you know, challenge that, that iconography uh, and see what could be done. Now, the other thing to note is that's just the front of the map. And by the way, this, it's not a big map. That's it. But on the back of the map is all of this information, an index to stations, which they also try to cram on the front of the map. And I don't really see the point of doing it on both sides. So I asked myself, hey, where can I get some inspiration from for making a new map? So of course, you go to 1980s horror movies. And you know, I, I thought, what would, what would Pinhead do? So I created a a big piece of board with 800 nails in it. I went and got a load of thread because I could kind of sketch without using a pen and pencil. And I threaded a new network through it. And I created this. And then the work bit, if you want to search on the Esri blog for a, um, hang on a sec, I've ever done it, an Esri blog for how to do this. There's how to make a transit map in ArcGIS Pro, and that gives all the detail. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about that today. And I ended up with this which retains the, the sort of traditional colors, it, the diamond forms. I like that because it riffed off Beck's original map, you know, with the diamond interchange stages. Um, the typography I now made hierarchical, so I could encode an awful lot of the station stuff rather than as symbols just by using different size lettering, different color lettering. And it seemed to me a much more efficient way of actually uh, going about making the map. Um, I also left off a lot of clutter because, like I said, it, it's on the back. If people need to know about access to a station, step-free access, or they want to know something else about that, it's on the back of the map. You don't need to put everything on the map. We know that. You don't need to put everything on the map. Transport for London appear not to know that and try to put everything onto the map. So what about the reaction? Well, this was one of the better ones. <clears throat> You know, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't enamored with that at the time, um, but I've come to ag agree with some of it. <coughs> uh, Cameron Booth uh, was a little more balanced and a little bit, gave a little bit more context to some of his comments. We don't need to, to read through this, but, uh, you know, he was making some comments about um, consistency. And, and again... I tend to agree with this, and I, I don't think it's possible to make a map in isolation of critique, particularly when I'm myself, along with many others, are saying that the map actually needs redesigning anyway, that by default I'm critiquing Transport for London's map. So I got eyes on the map, I listened to some of the comments, the concerns, and uh, I put the map on the back burner for a while. And then we get to 2022, with the opening of the Elizabeth line. And you know, you may, you may have your own opinions, but, you know, there's plenty of additional clutter on this map, a lot of it that I don't think works particularly well. Um, according to John Hunter, the head, of, head designer of Transport for London, he said, the new map isn't complicated. What would Beck have done? It would probably look like what we've done. And I respectfully disagree with Mr. Hunter. Um, so new stuff is added. There's no omission. There's no craft. Um, there's no movement of elements to accommodate additions. There's a, 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 a line that goes all the way through the middle somewhere that starts just curving and curving and curving to fit around labels that were previously placed in a, a previous version. Don't move the label. No, let's put a line around the label. That seemed a little bit ludicrous. So we've, we've most definitely reached a junction 
and so I, I set about making a, a detailed critique, and you'll be familiar with this sort of stuff, you know, an overlay where I, I just annotated everywhere that I'd found issues with the map, other people had found issues with the map, and just catalogued what I thought needed to change as part of any redesign. And it's a lot of stuff. Some lines are abutted, some are not. Uh, the once simple interchange symbol is now cumbersome. There's so many unnecessary bends. Some con connectors are ridiculously long uh, to accommodate decisions made on previous maps and so on and so on. Uh, typography, alignment, justification are all over the place. There's no consistency. Um, and even when you consult the legend, it, it doesn't actually make too much sense. So, I needed some inspiration for making a new version. So what did I do? I asked Pinhead, and his advice was... We'll tear your soul apart. It's a bit extreme. But, <clears throat> that's what Pinhead, enough of you. That's, that's basically, I agreed with him. That's, that's what we should do. We should rip it up and start again. Um, so that's what I did. I ripped my map up. I just basically put it into ArcGIS Pro and selected everything, exploded it, moved everything around the place and set about rebuilding it to try and accommodate a lot of those, those changes. Um, I literally tore my map apart. And I ended up with this as the result. Um, this is the, the first showing of this version of the map that I finished at 9 p.m. on Monday. And um, I think, and there's nothing like putting in a conference abstract for getting a piece of work done, let me tell you. I think, and this is just my opinion, I think it's got a better overall balance. It's a station's first approach, not a line's first approach. So I wanted the stations to be the things that the lines are designed around, not just fit them in wherever the lines went. Um, I've actually removed a lot of what probably was contrived diamond symbology. Um, I've removed a lot of extraneous information that uh, you, know, you can better find on the, the reverse of the map and come up with a sort of a, a symbology for the stations, which is a lot more efficient, uh, a lot fewer symbols, a lot fewer connectors, and makes a lot more sense. I retained the hierarchical typography, um, and the current map the current tube map, the official map, has 259 curves and 256 interchange symbols. This map, my new version, has 195 curves and 225 interchange symbols. So I can say with some absolute certainty that it's 19.5% more graphically efficient. Actually, 19.55, but you know, we won't worry about the 0.05. Um, and I kind of like it. And interestingly, there's also still space for a little bit of advertising to go on the map. Um, there's, a, there's a lovely little spot by Westminster, nice little Des Res that's available for anybody who wants a six-week job. So who knew Liz Trust was going to get the biggest laugh this afternoon? That, thank you for that. So. I digress. What I wanted to do was go a little bit further and be a little bit more controversial with the map. Uh, so I went down a different route altogether. And this is the current classification of lines, which is heavily based on uh, historical organization and colors. It's misleading, though, because of its insistence on the legacy classification and the colors. And it's inconsistently applied. This, in fact, is the actual route by map by mode if you apply the colors correctly. There's 17 different colors that no longer make sense to demarcate the lines. And even some of the naming conventions are no, no longer make sense. So it's the Elizabeth Line line. That, that, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so wait for it. I'm gonna propose we change the colors right here and now. Wow. So here's my new color scheme. Okay, there's only six colors. Uh, seven, maybe, if you count properly. Um, these are now accessible colors for people with different vision. Because the old map, you couldn't use it. Impossible if you had different vision. Um, it's consistent. It's coherent. It suits to 2022, not a design that was made 100 years ago, nearly. Um, and it actually allows you to do something more interesting, which was map routes onto each of the lines. Because guess what? Every train on each line does not go to and from the same place. It's like, what? 
you know, you stand on a platform, the London Underground, and you want to go to Piccadilly train, you have to make sure you're on the right train. Even though it goes in the same direction, it might not go to the same station, which isn't in any way encoded on the current map. So that looks complicated, but it means you can create this. And this is my second new version of the map uh, with brand new colors, which I think calms it a little bit. It's not quite so chaotic. Um, there will be people horrified that the traditional colors don't exist, and I get that. But um, this is the first time anyone's seen it. I haven't heard any dissent so far. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and appreciate I'm showing it to an audience that's not in London, so that might help. Um, but I figured because Nasus is ni nicest, I would, I would encourage, um, you know, the response that I know you want to give to this magnificent new piece of cartographic design. So um, it, it begins, <laughs> and then it goes something like, and then hopefully it ends with, thank you. So I, I now have about, what, 150 folks who say this is brilliant. <laughs> so in summary, uh, I've kind of made a new pair of maps. Uh, a totally new design language um, that I think makes far better sense uh, of today's much more congested network than holding on to the past philosophies of, of Harry Beck and Transport for London as they keep uh, reiterating it. Um, there's, there's clearly legacy. You know, the map is not terrifically different in structure. It actually is if you look in detail. You know, every station and every line is in a different place, even though the overall map is not completely um, different to, to the original. I've made a few contentious calls, because that's my job, um, and particularly regarding the color. I know that. Um, but I want to leave you with one sort of final thought. You remember in 1933, Harry Beck wasn't asked to make a new map. He just made it in his spare time and offered it. And Transport for London, or London Underground as it was then, said, this is rubbish, we don't want this new map, it doesn't work for us. Um, and they very reluctantly did a very limited print run um, of his first map, basically saying, this isn't gonna work, and as long as the public say they don't like it, great, we don't need it. Unfortunately, the public did like it, which is why we ended up with Harry Beck's map as the London Underground map. So you never know, mine or one of these redesigns um, that people offer up may get some traction and thank you <laughs> and somebody might sit back and go you know what it might be it might be time to change um, change the map and more than anything really what I think I'm trying to suggest here is um, I think it's important to challenge maps where you don't necessarily think that they no longer suit um, the intended original purpose um, and create alternatives to show you how a different type of map might be built, um, how it might improve or at least challenge um, what's going on and really just to help inform discussion going forward. Um, so with that, um, I'll give you another John Nelson video. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, with that, thank you very much.